Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I'm really excited about today's video. Today we're on site with direct controls and automations, looking at a house that they're wiring. We walked around and showed him a couple things that he's going to want to fix before the inspector comes. All in all, it's an absolutely rock solid job. Now they're kind of in the middle of the process, but I do want to walk around and talk about a bunch of codes with you. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start here in the kitchen. Now, he's chosen to use 14-gauge wire and 12-gauge wire throughout the home. Absolutely no problem with that. He's ran 14-gauge home runs all the way back, so there's no confusion. He's pulled over some 8-3 wire for his range, which is perfectly okay. He's going to put that on a 40-amp breaker, and then every 4-foot after that, but that does not count spaces like ranges and sinks. Same thing here. We're going to have a break at the sink. This looks good. This was one thing right here that we did get. He needs to add one outlet right there. Now down here at the dishwasher, the old way that, that, that we all used to do it, including myself, is we would put the receptacle behind the dishwasher. All right, I want to take a second and pause right there. I said that we used to always put them behind the dishwasher. I have put them behind the dishwasher in the past, but if you look at 422.16b26, it lets you know that you're no longer allowed to put them behind the dishwasher. You're actually required to put them adjacent there too. Now, typically in the past, I would have preferred to hardwire it, which is still code legal. You do not have to cord and plug connect it. They've increased the length of the cord inside that code right there to accommodate for this, but you can still hardwire it, but you can't put it behind it. You must put it adjacent there too, and typically we put it in a cupboard right next to it. I let them know it's no big deal. We're going to have to move that over here in that cabinet, and I'll put the code on the screen so we're gonna have to go through on all the house check all of his box fill but thankfully he's taken my program and he'll be able to go through and do that down here in the laundry room he's decked it out and you know modern day houses are usually over circuited but we have our we have our water heater here and then he's pulled a home run just for this room outside of the required laundry circuit I'll put the code on the screen for the requirement for the two kitchen small appliance, the one laundry. Then on top of that, he has a dedicated laundry circuit there. And it looks like he has his 10-3 ran over here for his drive. All right, y'all, let's take a second right there and take a look at this. I'm curious to know at what height you guys are installing your dryer receptacles. Is it 24? Is it 48? Is it 18? And what type of box are you using? Are you using a two-gang setup like this, or are you using a bracketed four square, letting the wire poke out, cutting it in later? We'd love to hear what you're doing down in the comments below. Fire. Now, as we go to head outside, we're required to have illumination for all egresses, and he's taking care of us on that. We got that there, trimmed out the boxes already very nicely. He's done a super high quality job on this whole construction of this building, including the wiring. We have our service outlet for our HVAC, and here we have our outdoor disconnect. Now he hadn't wired a house in uh, you know quite a while. He's an engineer you know by trade, um, but, but cut his teeth running wire back in the day. He used his no locks, but he did need to torque. So he's going to have to torque those up. And then also he has a good footing ground. So we're going to remove this and uh, we're going to, I, I told him about that. So he's actually going to remove this. He thought that he needed a supplemental ground according to 250.52, but he found out that if you have that footing ground, you're not required to have that supplemental electrode. It's going to end up being an underground system and it's going to come over there from that pole over there and come over. I want to take a minute and show you guys Greenville, Tennessee absolutely gorgeous out here now let's head up to the front porch all right y'all so here on the front porch we're just required to have one outlet on this level on the front and then we are required to uh, have illumination we're covered with having it on both sides he's done a nice job everything looks nice neat and clean getting ready for his rough and inspection great inspector out here easy to work with uh, but very sharp and knows what he's looking for now let's go ahead and head back inside Let's head back in the front door, and what we're going to be looking for is things... Oh, I wanted to stop and show you guys this. This is a six-gang box purchased off Amazon. Always make sure all of your things that are required to be listed are UL listed if you get them from Amazon. This one's really neat. It has dividers if you want to divide out the low voltage, and uh, this is a really neat, unique box. I'm sure you had to put a special stud there just for it. Going to be fine on box fill. I bet you can fit a million and a half wires in there. And then we're going to start off from this wall and have an outlet every six feet and every 12 feet after that. Looks like he's got good spacing coming on around. Now this is one here that I wanted to to show you guys he's ran his ser up through there do you guys think it's okay to have it in there 
That's going to be up to the electrical inspector and the building inspector. But I'm going to say check your manufacturer's specifications, and the odds are, yes, it's going to be likely to be okay to be run back there. But work with your local electrical inspector and your manufacturer's specifications for the heating unit itself. But that is not a plenum back there. It's not being used for environmental, environmental air. All right, now going through here, we're going to head over here into this area where the panel is we'll stop and look at the panel before we move on he's gonna have to check his box fill on all these like we talked about got nice 14 gauge home runs coming back he's gonna fire caulk everything air draft everything coming on through looking good and as we come around here he's gonna do a can fan there everything has been wired very well now here we are in the closet what do you think do you have to have a light in the closet do you have to have a receptacle that's a great question. But when we look at these codes here, we find out that the answer is no. So we're actually not required to have that receptacle at all, but it is a great option for a modern home. Now here in the living room, we have to be within six feet of that wall there. Come around, have to be every 12 feet thereof, all the way around. Would have to be within six foot of that wall there. And he's going to work all of his branch circuits in. Now let's go ahead and head up these stairs here. So as we head up the stairs, we quickly see that we have more than six risers. Now the only required place in the NEC that you have to have a three-way switch is on a set of stairs. You can actually have a thousand foot hallway and only have one switch. It would be very inappropriate, but you could do it. So we only have to have one three-way in this entire house, code required, and it would be from right there to right there. Now we have a landing here. The question is, do we have to have another switch here? And the answer is no, unless it opened up to a door like going into another room. Like if this was going into another room and you had a landing, you would also have to have a switch for this landing. Got himself a receptacle put there. That's going to serve him later. This is what we call in East Tennessee a bonus room. Of course, it has a bathroom as well. I guess this isn't. This would be like the bonus room. This is like another bedroom. So uh, I'm loving it. Come through here. Got nice spacing. Turn it. Looks like maybe a cool old barn into a house. I love it. Coming on through here. Nothing else really pops out. I made sure that he had home runs to all of his bathrooms. Everything else is looking good. Looks like he's got his work cut out for him. Now, whether you want to wire your own house or have a pro do it, just make sure that you're following all the local court codes and ordinances. And I just want you to know that you can do it. All right, y'all, that's it here today out on the farm. I want to give a shout out again to Direct Controls and Automation for letting us come out, tour, do a little inspection for them. I want to show you how good God is. I needed these. I was getting ready to leave to go to Lowe's. We're doing a little fifth quarter Sunday type thing at our church this week for the youth. And he had them already here loaded up. Let's go ahead and go get it.